we will be learning about houses in ancient Israel. Our modern houses can tell us more than you might think about our society and our lives. Understanding ancient Israel's homes can help us understand more about the ancient Israelites culture. The first step to understanding an ancient Israel house is learning about the materials it is built with. The main determining factor of what a house was built with was the availability of materials. For example, if you lived in the coastal plains, your home would have been made from mud bricks because clay was readily available. Some of the most commonly used building materials in ancient Israel were stone, wood, reeds, and mud. Stone was the most durable building material outlasting wood and mud. This made stone the most popular building material. Stone was used to build the foundation of the home and sometimes used to create the exterior and interior walls of the home. Stone homes were usually located in the hill country where limestone was easily found and formed into stone building materials. Wood was also a very important and common material used in the construction of homes in ancient Israel. Wood was used in almost all homes to form a basic frame. Wood was also used for the roof beams and joists, as well as the window frames, doors, and door jams. There were many different types of lumber that were used. Again, the type of wood or lumber used depended on your location. Another common building material was reeds. Reeds are tall, thick, thick grasses found in the swamps or wetlands. Reeds were laid across the roof joist of some houses to create a foundation for plaster or mud coverings. Now the picture with the eye stock photo with the eye stock wording is actually reeds in the Nile River. Finally the last building material that we will cover is mud. Mud was sometimes formed into brick using mud and straw. This was called mud brick and it was primarily it was the primary construction material for buildings and walls in the coastal plain and valley areas. Mud was also used for coverings of roof or used as a plaster for filling in between stones. Now here we have some mud brick stones or bricks and then we have a mud brick house. The homes in ancient Israel started with four wooden pillars, then the foundation was made of stone, then the walls would be built of mud bricks or stone. The frame of the roof would have been framed out of wood timbers, then the reeds would have been laid across the frame of the roof. After the reeds were laid out, they were covered in a layer of plaster or mud, creating a watertight seal. It is unknown how long it took to, for a house to be built in ancient Israel. Now, as we can see here, one, two, and three, and four would have been houses and their foundations. And then the other photo we have would be a foundation of a house with a four pillar courtyard and a back room. And then here is a roof with timber rafters with the reeds laid over the rafters. First Kings 5, 7, 3, and 3 through 18 states, Then the Lord commanded, and they quarried great stones, costly stones, to lay the foundation of the house with cut stones. So Solomon's builders and Hiram's builders and the Gebelites cut them and prepared the timbers and the stones to build the house. Houses were laid out in a simple form, normally called the four-room house because they consisted of four rooms. The center of the house was called the courtyard, and rooms surrounded the courtyard. All houses were made with the same basic plans, and they rarely consisted of windows, and if they did, they would have been small slits in the roof or upper walls to let air flow in and out. All houses had a small kitchen in the courtyard with an oven that consisted of clay or mud. It was often used to cook food or for warmth in the winter. Also, some houses had stables in the courtyard for cattle, or animals to stay safe, dry, and the cattle would be used for warmth in the winter. The roof was also important in houses 
as they used it for storage, sleeping, and worship. In Jeremiah 19.13, we see, we read, In the houses of Jerusalem and the houses of, of the kings of Judah shall be defiled like the place of Tabet. All the houses whose roof, roofs offerings have been made to the whole host of heaven and liberations have been poured out to other gods. As we see here, the roofs were very important in worship. So, all in all, houses, our modern houses, are very different than houses in ancient Israel. Houses in ancient Israel were normally very small and were very open. And they were also very close together, as seen in this picture. Now, you may be wondering, why does this even matter? Well, think of it. If your house was very small and very open, if your family was talking about God, you would all be talking about God. There wasn't much to do as there weren't TVs or electricity or anything like that. So there was a lot of conversation between the family and the children, etc. Now, with, if your family was talking about God, you'd be talking about God. If your family is worshiping, you'd be worshiping. There was no like there is today. Go in your room, Jimmy. Well, the room would just be like right across the way, and it wouldn't be very private. So you wouldn't have kids being staying in their rooms, you know, doing whatever they like. They would be all rolled into the conversation with the family. So as we can see here, there would be no separation in the family. There wouldn't be, you know, one kid believes this and the other believes in the parents believe this, they would all believe the same thing. There would most likely have been questions being rosen about the afterlife and such, and about their religion. So, as you can see, houses in ancient Israel were very important, and I hope with this video presentation you learned a thing or two about houses in ancient Israel. With that, I'm Josh Damien, thank you, and have a good day.